you're down 0 to 1 in a best of 3 match in a 25k buy in heads up tournament, and in the very first hand of the second match, the greatest player of all time shoves into you on a 3 flush board in your holding top pair. So, what should you do? Well, stick around to find out. Now, we got some two big hands right off the bat. And just to be clear, right, this is the. What? <laughs> two big hands right off the bat. <laughs> Seven, six suited. <laughs> this is the bubble round, right? So, like, the winner here gets $100,000 and the loser doesn't get anything. So, uh, they're playing for real money. Bill Ivy, 100K. And it does go raise three bet. Where we go. Olivier, this might be it. <laughs> First hand. I'm, listen, I want to see the boys play a little bit. Is Steven going to go with that four bet? We have not seen a four bet alert at all this match. I don't even know if I've seen many. He does four oh. bet, indeed. Wow, Poppy with the call. Here we go. Right off the bat. Four bet. And I mean, at this, with oh, 17,000 is pretty small. And I expect Phil to continue here with the suited connector. He does, Olivier Lockett. So each player starts out with 125 big blinds here, and Steven opens it up on the button with ace 10 off, and Phil three bets with seven six of diamonds, both of which are standard. Steven then four bets, and Ivy calls. As we can see from these default preflop ranges, from Stevie's perspective, aces through jacks and ace king are essentially pure four bets. And then a smattering of bluffs are mixed in with these big little suited combos and a few offsuit Broadway combos as well, including Ace 10 off. In Ivy's shoes, 7 6 suited is a pure call, as the only hands that are primarily 5 betting are Kings, Queens, Ace King, some Jacks, and then some suited wheel Aces. We should note here that the sizings actually used in this game are a bit smaller than the ones used in the default preflop ranges, so we could expand the ranges a bit to account for this. Eh, well, eh. I expect to see a very small bet here from Stevie. Yeah, something like six, seven, eight thousand, mm -hmm. and really not much Phil can do with this hand. Not the flop he was looking for, obviously. Yeah, yeah obviously Ace King Deuce great board for the four better. When Phil does call that four bet, he's obviously going to have some aces, Ace Jack, Ace. The flop comes Ace King Deuce with two clubs and a diamond, and both players check. Phil's check here is standard, as the board favors the preflop aggressor, and Stevie could go either way with a check or bet, according to the solver. Interestingly, the solver is actually checking a majority of its range in this spot. So why is this? Well, it's likely a combination of a couple of things. One, although Stevie has the range advantage, Phil should have a decent proportion of ace x in his range, which mitigates some of Stevie's preflop advantage in big pairs, kings through jacks. Also, we see that the solver actually slow played aces preflop in Ivy's shoes, so he should, in theory, have top set here as well. Secondly, given that this is a 4 bet pot, the SPR is very low, around 2.4, which means that Stevie should have a lower urgency to build the pot, since getting stacks in shouldn't be too difficult, particularly in position. When we compare the solver strategy with the exact same ranges but with a much higher SPR, over 10, we see that the solver is much more aggressive, c-betting nearly 75% of the time and heavily favoring a full pot bet. Steven actually checks back this flop and now Ivy, don't know if he's going to get two out of line at any point in time in this hand. Yeah, this is an interesting check back, right? Because Stevie does have a bunch of really, really good hands. Pocket aces, pocket kings, ace king. Um, oh. Wow, look at this check back. I mean, this check back just gets filled to bet, drawing dead. The turn is a five of diamonds, and Ivy steals the initiative with a half pot bet. According to the solver, seven six of diamonds is essentially a pure check here. When we isolate Phil's air balls, we see that the solver much rather prefers probing with a flush draw, which makes sense when we consider Stevie's check back range on the flop. Given his significant range advantage, we see that the solver c bet the majority of the time with its air to leverage fold equity. So Steven's checkback range is showdown value heavy, with some weaker top pairs, second pairs and third pairs, and then the solver also throws in some slow played sets. Accordingly, in Phil's shoes, the solver is less inclined to probe with pure trash, since the likelihood of Stevie calling the turn bet should be relatively high. Right, The vast majority of Stevie's range is comprised of hands with greater than 50% equity, and he has less than half of the proportional amount of trash hands compared to Phil. I mean, yeah, you never know what happens here. Phil Ivey might might go animal here at some so point. Phil, this river. Phil targeting the the kind of other hands that Stevie has. Stevie calls, which we see as the standard play with top pair. In fact, only five percent of the range is raising in this spot, as the SPR is now below one. 
so the need to protect is minimal, and Stevie is also in position, so he can easily shove with strong hands if Phil decides to check the river. Hands like pocket jack, pocket queens, wow, right. this six has no showdown value, I think. Uh, but, you know, you might think about using it as a hands, as a card that you want to bluff with. Oh, man. oh my god! Bill Ivey! Wow! Skips it in. Look at this first hand. These guys are animals. The river is the six of clubs, and Phil makes third pair, so you might think he would be inclined to just check back here to try to get the showdown, but that is not the case with Mr. Ivy. He shoves, and we see that the solver is indeed shoving in this spot nearly 30% of the time with its range. The flush coming in is likely better for Phil, since he should have basically all of the flushes in his range, whereas Stevie should have been c-betting with a good proportion of his flush draws on the flop, and therefore he's missing some of this region of his range given the check back. Accordingly, Phil has around a 10-6 to 6 proportional advantage when it comes to flushes. So where is the solver pulling its bluff shoves from to accompany Phil's flushes and other strong combos? Well, we see that most of these shoves actually come from weaker pairs. Given Stevie's check on the flop and call on the turn, over 65% of his range is second pair or better, which means Ivy's lower pairs have very limited showdown value and therefore would benefit significantly if he were able to get pocket sevens through queens, king x, and maybe some ace x to fold. So let's isolate Ivy's hands that are below second pair and then try to figure out how the solver is constructing its bluffing range in this spot. If we take a look at the blocker scores, we see some distinct clusters start to appear among this class of hands. First, we're going to focus on the hands with the highest blocker scores, and we see that over 80% of these hands are shoving with an EV regret shove of zero. Not surprisingly, all of these hands contain a club for the flush blocker. Now let's examine Phil's hands in this class with the lowest on blocker scores. And we see that these hands, comprised of Queen X and Jack X, are checking over 80% of the time with an EV regret check of zero. This makes sense when we isolate Stevie's weakest combos that are most likely to fold, where we see that queens and jacks are the most prevalent combos. Finally, when we analyze Phil's weak hands that have low blocker scores but high unblocker scores, we see that the solver is mixing checking, betting, third pot, and shoving. These are hands that do not contain a queen or jack or any clubs. And when we look up the small remaining percentage of 7-6 suited combos in Phil's range, we see that these combos in particular are indeed mixing all three of these options. Hard to fold an ace after you 4-bet and then check back. Like, honestly? Like, you'd like to have a club, but like, you induce this no equity bluff on the turn? Like... Oh, Ivy says he has ace queen, maybe slow played ace aces, slow played like, kings. Yeah, ace queen is tough to play like this. I guess you would play it like this. Oh, oh my fight. god! Oh my god! Wow. Stevie decides to lay it down, and we do see that top pair is the primary cutoff point between a pure call and folding. So let's isolate the top pairs to see if we can understand how the solver is constructing its defending range. First, let's examine the hands in this class that have the highest blocker score. These hands are calling nearly 90% of the time, with an EV regret call of just 0.5%. So what are these hands comprised of? Well, they either contain a club for the flush blocker, or they are ace-queen or ace-jack, which the big blind was actually shoving with for value given the short SPR. Next, let's isolate Stevie's hands with the lowest blocker and unblocker scores, which we see are folding over 80% of the time, with an EV regret fold of just 0.3% of the pot. And these are all top pairs with an 8, 7, or 4 kicker. When we focus on Phil's bluffs, comprised of his weakest combos, not too surprisingly, we see that this class is primarily comprised of 8s, 7s, and 6, 4, and 5, 4, which are the lower pairs we discussed earlier as being some of Phil's best bluffing candidates since they had limited showdown value and unblocked much of Stevie's folding range. And finally, when we focus on Stevie's top pairs with low blocker scores but high unblocker scores, we see that these are essentially pure calls. We have ace-4 with a 4 of clubs, since unlike the other ace-4 combos without a club, which were primarily folding, the 4 of clubs doesn't block Phil's bluffs, as all of his 4x combos with a club made flushes. And then we have ace-9 and Stevie's ace-10, which are also unblocking most of Phil's bluffs that were more concentrated around the lower paired hands that unblocked Stevie's folding range. 
So ultimately, although Phil's play in this hand wasn't totally solved or approved, it appears that his overall understanding of range dynamics and hand incentives were actually in alignment with the solver. He recognized the fact that many of Stevie's strongest hands and flush draws should have been incentivized to c-bet the flop, so when Stevie didn't c-bet but did call a bet on the turn and then the flush came in, Phil understood that the river was in his favor and that his 6 had very limited showdown value, so he decided to apply max pressure and ended up taking down a nice pot. So that's the video for today. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay bounced. Learn a lesson from the E's. Stay in your place and don't step to real motherfucking G's.